Hi, good evening, uh, everyone. A good day and welcome uh, to the LLF Let's Learn Futures webinar series. Uh, we are delighted to have you here with us today. And before we get started, please confirm that you can hear us loud and clear by typing yes or sharing an emoticon in the chat box. If you are able to uh, listen to me and hear me clearly, tap in yes or uh, give us an emoticon so that I know uh, your audio is fine on your side. Uh, good, I see many of yeses here. Our topic for today is a beginner's guide to order flow in futures trading. Now, I believe some of you uh, may be quite new to the term about what is order flow. So, uh, which we believe uh, today will be a great interest uh, to you. And this LLF uh, is proudly uh, brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and in collaboration with our company, Excellent. I'm CY so I will be the moderator for today's session. Uh, today, we are privileged to have uh, Chin Yi Xuan uh, with us today, and he will be sharing valuable insights on this informative topic. And I, I, and I understand many of you may have uh, curious about what is order flow and how you can use that in uh, your futures trading. Uh, therefore, our topic today will uh, revolve around this aspect, where Yi Xuan will elaborate on this topic in greater details. Uh, we hope you find this session enriching and informative, and we welcome any questions you may have regarding today's topic. And thank you for joining us today. Um, I noticed many, uh, some of you here uh, just entered this webinar. Before we begin, a final quick audio check. Uh, please type in OK or Yes in the chat box, uh, or give us a thumbs up to confirm that you can hear me clearly. All right. If needed, please adjust your volume settings to ensure optimal sound quality. To ensure the smoothest and highest quality video experience on your side, I highly suggest that you turn off your video camera during the session, as this will help ensure that everyone can enjoy an interrupted video and audio and have an optimal learning experience. Our session for today will be divided into two parts. The first hour will be presented by Yi Xuan. Following that, we will be opening up for a Q&A session where you can ask any questions you may have related to today's topic. And to ensure we can address your questions, kindly type them in the Q&A box and send them to all co-hosts. This will allow me to directly assess your question easily. And along the way, if you have any question, uh, you uh, may type your question in the Q&A box as well. As this LLF Let's Learn Futures webinar series is brought to you by Bursa Malaysia, uh, we are excited that uh, we have upcoming topics and more to come. Every Tuesday, we will be having this LLF uh, webinar. Uh, we have topics that will be conducted in three languages, English, uh, Malay, and Mandarin. So if you are currently just only trading the stock market or just starting trading the Malaysia futures market, or even if you are interested in adding futures into your portfolio, this LLF webinar is right for you where our panel of speakers will be sharing with you insightful knowledge and practical strategies related to futures trading. So if uh, you are interested in any topic and want to improve your knowledge and skills on futures trading, you can scan this QR code, register yourself and make sure to add it into your calendar so you don't miss the sessions. There are still more content packed and informative topics lining up and we will be adding to our list accordingly. Besides the LLF webinar series, we also have the LLF online workshop. Now, this online workshop is different from uh, the webinar as this workshop is for those who are serious in getting started in futures trading. In these workshops, uh, we will be covering a full set of a beginner's knowledge in futures trading that are essential for you. Uh, it's a step-by-step -step guide to enable you to kickstart your first futures contract. So each session is uh, three hours. If you're new to futures trading or would like to learn about futures trading, quickly register yourself in this online workshop. 
It's entirely free and fully sponsored by Busan Malaysia. It's only limited to the first 50 online attendees. So grab your seat fast as this online workshop is definitely right for you if you want to kickstart your futures trading. The upcoming session would be this coming Saturday. So quickly register yourself in this. Before we begin, it's my pleasure to introduce our speaker for today, Qin Yi Xuan. Uh, with a background of degree in economics from uh, UM, University Malaya, currently Yi Xuan is the general manager of Algopedia Sandiram Berhad, which is a proprietary trading firm in Malaysia specializing in algorithmic trading. He has over five years of content creation experience on personal finance and investment via his personal blog called nomanila.com. Besides that, Yi Xuan is also featured in various media platforms. So without further ado, I am delighted to hand over the presentation to Yi Xuan. So Yi Xuan, uh, there you go. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to uh, my sharing session on order flow today. My name is Yi Xuan from Algopedia. And uh, before we start, just a quick disclaimer. Uh, this presentation is provided for general information only. only. It's not intended as an investment advice offer or solicitation for the purpose or uh, for any sales of uh, securities, stocks, futures, or investment products. Uh, stocks, securities, and futures imply risk and to be undertaken only if you understand the risk. Please seek your own tax, legal, and financial advice before investing in stocks and futures. So all information in this presentation is subject to change without any notice. All right. So first of all, uh, welcome everyone to the session today. Um, as you know, we are going to talk about order flow. Now, uh, let's go uh, give you guys a brief overview of what we are going to talk, going to talk about today. Number one. I'm going to introduce to all of you why price move and what is order flow exactly. Secondly, I'm going to share with you why order flow matter in your trading. Number three, we are going to talk about how to use order flow tools like the depth of market or in short DOM and volume profile to improve your trading. And number four, we are going to I'm going to give some of uh, all of you some examples and principles of how to use order flow. And lastly, I'm going to share with you how to practice reading order flow. Now, first of all, a question to everyone. Um, have any one of you heard of order flow before? If you have heard of it, uh, just type in the chat, uh, say yes. If uh, no, if you haven't heard of it, just type no. No, right? I think most of you are pretty new. Uh, most, I think most of you are pretty new to, um, to, to this order flow. Um, so, you know what? Let's get started. Let's get started. Okay, so some of you might be wondering, you know, uh, whenever you look at uh, search for professional traders or trading related uh, articles or content, right? You tend to see photos like this, right? Where some of these traders right in front of them is this red and blue thing, right? Which you are, uh, most of you tend to not be familiar with, right? I think most of uh, us traders, when we first started learning about trading, uh, the first thing that we come to know is the charts, right? The, the candlesticks, typical candlestick charts that we are very familiar with, right? Um, some of you might be wondering, you know, why are some of these professional traders that you see, they use this uh, thing which we call the depth of market or ladder, right? Or, or as for me, I call it DOM, right? Some of, uh, why are some of these traders using DOM? You know, or more important question would be what are retail traders like ourselves missing, right? What are the information that we are missing from not knowing how to read the dome? So without further ado, I'm gonna share with you. I'm gonna share with you why. Um oh yeah, before that, I just want to before I move on, I just want to share with everyone a quick expectation setting. Number one, uh unlike most uh sharing session on trading, I'll cover the fundamental lesson first. So if you are you have notes or notebook with you, I highly recommend you to take some notes. Secondly, um, especially for traders that have learned technical analysis with, you know, with, by using indicators before, um, I highly recommend you to learn with an open mind, you know, uh, because there's a lot of things that uh, we can learn together. Number three, I will go slower because this is a very new topic. Please be patient with me and I promise it, it will be worth it. Number four, 
uh, of course, there will be practical application at the second half of the sharing session. Okay, so now, um, so now let's start with the let's right go straight into this. What is order flow? Okay, to understand order flow, I'll share with you. We need uh, what is a market? We first need to understand what is a market. So, as an example, th this uh, I I will use a, a watermelon market as an example. So, let's say me buying a watermelon from a watermelon seller at five ringgit per piece. So this is what we call a transaction, which is an action of exchanging an asset. In this case, we are a product or service for money. In this case, it's a watermelon, right? I buy, I'm buying a watermelon for five ringgit per piece, right? But we all understand in, in a real life, in real life, that's not just one consumer and that's not just one watermelon seller, right? In the, in a, in a real life market, there are more, there are many more consumers or and or sellers right and there are many more watermelon sellers in the market okay and not only that they are also uh, as such right a market this is where we i want to introduce everyone to the concept of the market the market right if you um if you simplify it it's actually not as complicated it's actually a gathering of buyers and sellers participating in a transaction so what does this mean right so this means right at the, the market is where buyers and sellers come together and make uh, and do business, right? As simple as that. And not only that, um, aside from we as as per real market, watermelon are not just sold at five ringgit, right? What uh, they are they are always different prices that are be uh what uh, where a product is being sold. As an example, some may some sellers may decide that they want to sell their product at five fifty. You know, some watermelon sellers might decide they want to sell their product at six ringgit. Right. So as such, this is um this is a definition of market, not as complicated as it seems. But now I have a question for everyone. How does price move? Right? So because that there was a myth when I first started to learn how to trade, right? At least from um platforms like uh, YouTube and so on, right? They tend to have a idea or concept when a certain indicator uh, happens, right? Indicate something, uh, this is where price move, right? So people, uh, especially new traders, they tend to rely on indicators to tell them when to buy or sell. And they assume that it's because of indicators price move. But I want to show you with this example that is actually not the case, okay? So let's use back the watermelon example. So in this case, right, at five ringgit per piece, they are, let's assume that there are three, uh, there are four buyers and there are three sellers. Okay, so what happened if all the three buyers have cleared off the supply at five ringgit? Okay, this is where what uh, what will happen to the fourth person? Anyone? A good guess? What will happen to the fourth person if this person wants to buy a watermelon? Exactly, right? They want to buy at a higher price, price right? So in order to buy a watermelon, the fourth person will need to move on right to buy at the new market price of 550 okay so this is exactly how price move right this is actually a very resembles how price move in the real life market and even the financial market as i will show you later okay now now that we understand how price move i also want to show you that there are also uh, aside from buyers making decision Right in the market, the sellers right that supply the watermelon can also make decisions. So what do I mean by this? So let's say um the weather got hot right, and there are more people wanting to buy watermelon. Let's say at five fifty. Now at this point, if the sellers watermelon seller have yet to sell off his supply, this person this seller could say, you know what? I noticed that the weather is getting hotter, the demand is getting higher. Why not? I shift and sell my watermelon at a higher price, right? What's stopping him or her from doing this? Nothing, right? So it, as such, right, the decisions of buyers and sellers in this market, right, is what we call order flow, right? Formally, we call order, uh, I define order flow as a collective decision-making process by all the participants in the market, right? The buyers and the sellers, okay? So this essentially, ladies and gentlemen, is order flow. Now, that I described to you just now in the watermelon market is actually very, very similar to 
the financial market. So what, what do I mean by this? Okay, on, uh, on your left is the example, watermelon market example that I showed all of you just now. On your right is part of the debt or market or DOM as I would like to call it. This is something that uh, for those of you who trade uh, stocks or futures, right? You tend to see something like this uh, when you log into your trading platform, right? And here today for the first, at least the first, uh, we are going to talk about DOM a lot, right? I'm going to share with you how to use the DOM and firstly, uh, understand how the DOM works. Okay, now let's jump into this first. Well, how does real life market resembles a financial market? So remember just now, right? Me buying a piece of watermelon at five ringgit per piece is actually in financial market terms, it's called market order, right? I buy the watermelon at five ringgit is an actual demand. So as an example, as such, when you look at, oops, sorry. Uh, okay, as such, if you look at this part of the dome, the price right now is 3705, right? So what happened with the, what does the bracket on the right side means, right? So this means that at 3705, there were one contract or one futures contract traded at 3705 previously. So this is what we call the market order, all right? Now, now what, what does then, how about, Okay, then how about the sellers, the watermelon sellers, right? These are what we call in, uh, when it comes to the futures of stock market, we, what, this is what we call the pending sell order, right? These are the people uh, that are trying to sell the watermelon to you at 550 and 6 ringgit. So when you look at the DOM on your right side, right? If you may focus on my cursor for a while, right? This rate column over here, the 15, the 7, the 12, the 4, right? This are uh, essentially what we call the, uh, uh, the pending order, the people they are waiting to sell to you, right? They haven't sell it to anyone yet, but they are ready to sell at, let's say, 3706, 3707, 3708, if buyers uh, come, come to them and make a deal with them. So this is uh, essentially how close, right? Real life market, like a water, even a watermelon market resembles the financial market. Okay. So I hope you, uh, get, so, uh, the sense of how everything works so far. Okay. Now, not only that, one of the awesome thing about the financial market is you have the flexibility to go to make money or, or to profit when the market is going down, right? Especially in the futures market, you can take a short trade when the market is going down and um, you can make a profit. So this is where if you look at the uh, dark blue column, right? It is essentially what we call the pending buy orders, right? These are, imagine if the red, dark red column on the right are the sellers waiting to sell to you, right? The dark blue column on the left are the buyers that are uh, they are ready to buy from you if you are the one selling, okay? So essentially, right, just remember, the dark blue color is the pending buy order. The dark red color column on the right is the people that are waiting to sell to you, i.e. the pending sell order, okay? Now, uh, to quickly summarize what we have learned so far, I want to break down what a DOM or debt or market is, right? So first of all, on the blue, dark blue column, we, as we have talked about just now, we have pending buy order, which is a buyer's waiting to buy from you, okay? And secondly, we have the pending sell order, which is the seller's waiting to sell to you, okay? Now, we also have at the, uh, at the market order, which is the actual demand. So right now, at 3705 and the right bracket one, Right. It means that implies that there were one contract of futures traded at 37.05 previously. So this is what we call the market order. Now, you, some of you might be wondering, you know what, how about the column on the far right, right? The, the column on the far right is what we call the volume profile. So don't overcomplicate things, right? It's essentially, it tells us that the uh, it displays the trading volume, right? Actually, the actual demand that happened at each market. So as an example, right, at 3705, uh, there were 167 contracts traded at 3705. This is essentially what it means, right? Okay. So uh, now that I've uh, shared with you uh, a brief introduction of the DOM, 
I'm going to share, uh, I want to test everyone what we have learned so far, okay? So let me just play this video for a quick moment. Now, uh, some of you, uh, if you are on your laptop or uh, desktop, you might be able to see, okay? So please join me, right? Right now, um, the market is priced at 13, uh, 1334, sorry, 1434, right? 1434. So my question to you all that are watching, how can uh how would how can price move up from 1434 to 1434.5? Okay, I repeat my question. The price right now, the market price right now is 1434. How would a price move up from 1434 to 1434.5? By by doing what? Anyone want to uh, take a quick guess? Yes, exactly. Some of you got it right. In, in order to move up from 1434 to 1434.5, the, uh, the traders or the buyers will have to clear out the, um, we have to clear out the pending sell order at uh, the 11 pending sell order at 13, uh, 1434. Make sense? In order to move up, right? Someone, the buyers will have to clear out the 11 pending sell order in order to move out make sense right just like the watermelon market so with that in mind let me just quickly i want everyone uh, i will play this video and i want everyone to uh focus at around the uh 14 34 price point okay just focus at the price point okay let me play the video okay observe how in a moment the pendings order at the 1434 will be cleared okay so as you can see i just pause it so uh at this point right the all the pending orders as you can see just now there were like 11 right it's now cleared and price actually uh the uh, pending order has been cleared and what happened next is price would move up to 14 34.5 Right. So this is where you can actually see the transaction happening. So um, imagine yourself as like, you know, you take an aerial view at the watermelon market, you see a transaction happening. This is what you are seeing with the uh, debt or market or DOM, right? Interesting, right? Interesting information that you have, right? The, uh, compared to conventional price chart. All right. Now. Okay. So I have another question to all of you, right? Today, so far, we have learned about market order and banning order. My question to all of you is, Although both are important, which one is a more crucial piece of information when it comes to your trading? Any good guess? Okay, some of you say pending order, some of you say both, right? So um, I would like to give you my own pers pers perspective on this, right? So market order essentially is uh essentially will you agree that market order is actually um an actual transaction that has happened right i.e the buyers buying actually buying a watermelon right in in other words right a market order shows aggression in the market this shows that people have the intention to make uh, to do business in the market so meanwhile on the other hand a pending order right i.e in this case the watermelon sellers waiting to sell from you these are people these are uh, market participants with a passive intention in the market these are people that are waiting for let's say in this case buyers to go to them and make a business uh, make a deal with them right so in this case right when something is uh when you compare market order which shows aggression and pending order that shows a passive intention right market order in my opinion at least right is something that is an information that is more crucial why because i show you just now right uh someone that sells watermelon at 550 can uh suddenly change his or her mind to sell at six ringgit instead so this uh this pending orders can change right in the split second meanwhile market order is actual people clicking the buy and sell button if you imagine the financial market right makes sense so in my opinion market order Right, both both information are important, but market order is a more significant information in your trading. I'll show to you why in the next part. Okay, so uh, before we move on, just uh, I want to quickly break down again what is a dome, right? Uh, market order and pending order. So, uh, translating to a financial market from the watermelon market. Okay, so 
uh, the one, uh, the dark blue and the dark red column, right? Is the pending orders. The blue meaning referring to a pending buy order, which is the buyers waiting to buy, right? The red referring to pending sell order, the sellers waiting to sell to you. Imagine a watermelon market, right? So these two columns, right, are what we what I call the passive intent column. These are people waiting to make a bit of uh, uh, waiting for uh, market uh, for people to make a do do a deal with them. So these are people that's waiting on the sideline. Okay, what's more important, uh, in my opinion, sorry. In my opinion, is the actually the volume profile column, right? The volume profile column. Uh, sorry, I was trying to pull out the pen. The volume profile column, as well as the price, uh, the market order, uh, the pricing that shows where market order happens, right? Why? Because this records the actual executed market, right? Or volume in the market. This shows aggressive intention, i.e., the people that's actively clicking the buy and sell button. Make sense? All right. Now, okay. Now, my next. So now that we have learned about the basics of uh, the DOM, right, and also the what is a market order and pending order, we also learn about you know what are actually more important. What does market order mean, right? Aggress aggression, aggression, uh, pending order that means a passive intent in the market. Now, I will show all of you, right. We are coming to a more I would say a practical application of uh, order flow in the market with all these tools that uh, knowledge that we have learned so far. I share with you uh, two order flow nuances uh, or patterns that you can see with a DOM, right? You, you can spot with a DOM. So first of all, it's what I call spoofing. Okay, spoofing refers to a large pending orders that give a false impression of a strong support resistance, but it is pulled off from the market. Uh, it can be pulled off from the market last minute. So I actually saw the chat. Some of you, uh, I think one of you asked a question just now. Why, you know, uh, just now in the example, right? Instead of like thirteen or fifteen, uh, initial pending sell order that's being cleared off, there are only five that was being cleared off. This is the reason I'll share with you right now. So for everyone, now pay a, uh, let's pay attention here. Okay, so at uh right now. This is a price let or a dom of a crude palm oil. Okay, so I want to share with you uh, an anomaly here. Okay, so on the dark blue column, right, the pending buy order, you we see like a two two twenty eight eighty six eleven, right. So there's an anomaly of eighty six orders lying out at thirty eight thirty five. The price of thirty eight thirty five. So this is actually a larger than usual buy pending order, which give you know, a traders and impression if they are looking at the dome that there's a strong support at 38, 35. Now, observe what happened, you know, in 30 seconds later. So right now, uh, the initial screenshot is at 11, 57, 52. Exactly almost 30 seconds later, what happened when the price got to 38, 35, ladies and gentlemen? Hey, sorry, um, give me a moment. Huh? The, the volume, the pending order suddenly disappeared. Okay, the pen, the uh, pending order suddenly disappeared. And is there any new volume in recorded in the volume profile? It's still eighty nine. So this is what I call a uh, spoofing, right, in the market. So spoofing is a very interesting concept because uh, it gives people uh traders a strong impression, right. Where, where some retail traders that do not have an idea about spoofing, right? They tend to think, oh, that's like a strong support uh, at 38, 35. You know, let's front run, right? Let's enter at 38, 36 or 38, 37, knowing that, you know, there could be people supporting the price at 38, 35. So uh, people that don't understand spoofing, uh, traders that don't understand spoofing, they will get trapped into this kind of uh, order flow uh, pattern, okay? Now, let me uh now just I show you like a screenshot right right now let me show you the actual video uh, of how spoofing happened in real life okay now um give me a moment so in this video I want to show uh I want everyone to actually focus on the price thirty eight thirty five okay thirty eight thirty five focus on the price of thirty eight thirty five okay now let me play the video. So 38, 35, initially, there were only seven pending buy orders, right? If you can see, you can follow, right? Let me play the video, right? 
notice in a moment, suddenly there's a large spending order coming in. Stick with 38, 35, right? Ah, okay, I'll stop here. See how it, within a split second, suddenly 80 plus orders come in and buy a uh, line up at 38, 35. Now, another uh, the next thing that I want all of you to observe is as price goes down to, let's say, uh, goes down to where we got very close to 38, 35, let's say at 38, 36, right? What happened to the 86 uh, buy, pen, buy pending order, pending buy order? Okay, let's observe. Okay, we are 80 plus orders still at 38, 35. Ah, okay, let's wait for price to come down to 38, 35. So as you can see, uh, let me just replay this for you, right? At that split second, let me just replay. Okay, right now, the buy pending order is still 89. At, at, it's just happened at a split second, right? The, at the, when the market got to 38, 36, the buyers, uh, the pending buy order of 80 plus just decided to take off their orders. So what do, uh, this is what happened in front of you just now is what we call spoofing. Right, what uh is essentially because why is spoofing um such an interesting topic? Because anyone can put in a large pending order, right? Uh, and they can take it off anytime. So what I'm trying to uh tell everyone here, uh, the lesson that we can learn here today is pending order. When you see like a pending order, right? Uh, especially the large pending order, always take it with a pinch of salt. Some may be true uh support that's uh happening right but on the other hand there are also a lot of spoofing happening okay so always uh, the key takeaway here is take spoofing or pending orders especially the larger than usual pending orders with a pinch of salt okay now now that we have learned about spoofing now that we have learned about spoofing i want to share i want to introduce to all of you the next um pattern that you can spot on on uh on the dome right which is absorption so uh, to define absorption absorption is essentially orders being continuously added to create an impression of support or resistance what do i mean by this so as example let's go back to a watermelon market so as example right here three person has already cleared off the supply of watermelon at five ringgit so usually right from what we have discussed today the two person that's lying behind in order to get their watermelon, they will have to go up to buy at 550. Make sense, right? Because there are no more supply, right? At 500. But absorption happens when instead, uh, once the moment where the watermelon supply is clear out at 500, new supply come in, right? And take in all the demand from the other side. So as an example, in this case, uh, two watermelon come in and take on the two buyers demand. Right. And once that's done, uh, new supply come in again and absorb any demands that, that's coming at five ringgit. Okay. So essentially think of absorption as a sponge, right? Um, at each price point. So let's say in this case of five ringgit, right? Um, sellers, they just keep on absorbing the buyer's demand from the market. Okay. This is what we call absorption. Okay. So, so to show you, uh, to show you what's happening in the financial market, to uh, help you understand how it works in the financial market, uh, I want everyone to just focus on 38.40, the price of 38.40. Give me a moment. Huh? 38.40 is here. All right, 38.40, uh, and the volume profile recorded a 174 contracts traded at 38.40. What happened is, I'll show you a video later, but let me go through the plan with you, the, what's happened to you first, with you first. Buyers try to push through 3840, right? They want to push higher. But what happened is once they clear the one pending order, right? Sellers come in with, with another one pending order. You know what? They, they were like, you know what? Let, let, let me take on at more demand at 3840. And then once the uh, buyers clear off the demand, sorry, the buyers clear off the pending sell order again, right? 
sell, sellers come back in with more pending sell order. This cause price unable to push up, right? This cause the buyers unable to push up the price from 38, 40 to, uh, to a higher price. Okay, so this is what we call absorption, right? Imagine if you are just trading from a price conventional candlestick chart, right? Without looking at the DOM, right? These are all the crucial information that you are missing, right? Crucial, crucial piece of puzzle that you are missing from your decision making. Okay, so uh, very, very interesting stuff. Okay, now let me show you a, a video edition of what I described just now. So um, give me a moment. So this uh, screen or uh, video, is about this video is about uh is about the crude palm oil futures right the FCPO and I want everyone to focus on the price of thirty eight forty as we discussed just now right so let me just play first okay at thirty eight forty right now at thirty eight forty right now do you see that there are hundred and fifty seven volume that were traded and there are around twelve uh pending sell orders lying up here, right? So let's uh, let's play and I'll describe, I'll, uh, on the way I'll pause and describe to you the my thought process and the observation that I see, okay? I want to, everyone to, uh, I'll press play, observe as uh, price got clo closer to 38.40, right? Focus at 38.40 and the volume profile of 157, all right? Okay, let's wait for a moment. The price would be moving closer to 38.40 soon. Okay, price is getting closer to 38.40. All right, it's coming soon. All right, let's stop for a moment. Okay, so what happened here? Remember just now the volume at the volume profile is of 157. So at this point, right, buyers has uh, clear off the pending sell order and the new uh, vo uh, total volume that's transacted at the 38.40 is 174. So this means that there were transaction happened that happened at the 38.40. Now observe, starting from this point onwards, Buyers will try to push above the day forty multiple times, but for for all the times, right? Sell new sellers or fresh uh supply of uh pending sell order will come in, right? Take a look, look at one seven four, right? Buyers try to push one seven six, one seven seven, one seven nine, one eighty, right? As you can see, right? It happened within a space second, right? What happened was buyers were trying to push through the day forty, right? At uh, but fresh supply or in this case the fresh pending sell orders just keep coming in you know what you want to buy okay i'll take in the order i'll take in the order i'll take in the order right but uh but as a, as such right as a result the market actually was not able to push through 3840 so if i can just show you right what in, this means right in let's say uh charts right this means right sometimes you realize that price go up it try to test the same level many times right but you uh in in your pure price chart right that typical uh that typical price chart that uh, most trader use they sometimes get frustrated or they ask question like you know why are price not pushing through right and you are losing a piece of information because you may not know right the absorption is actually happening right uh under uh, in the order flow when you can look at the dom right so this is a very very interesting observation and i highly recommend you to you know consider putting this piece of information into your trading decision making. All right, so uh, what we have learned so far is um, spoofing and absorption. Okay, so a quick takeaway from our session so far. Number one, indicators do not cause price to move. Number two, order flow is equivalent to collective decision making process by all the participants in the market, the buyers and the sellers. Okay, market order equals to demand, pending order equals to the supply, all right? Um, 
so think of it as if uh, whenever you look at the dark blue and the dark red column, right, the pending order column, they, these are the watermelon sellers, right? Okay, lastly, price move up when buying demand is more aggressive than supply at a particular price level and vice versa. Now, uh, I, uh, now we have just so far we have learned about, you know, how to read a dome, you know, how to look at the spoofing pattern and also absorption pattern in the market. Uh, I want to introduce all of you to, again, a very important concept in my trading, which is auction market theory and volume profile. Okay. Oh, now to come back to coming back to the watermelon market. Okay. So remember just now I bought a watermelon at five minutes, but with time, right? Would you agree that uh, we'll see a pattern where some people will buy instead of five ringgit, some people may buy at 450, some people may buy a watermelon at 550, you know, because no one product is selling at just one specific price, right? Uh, in, in, in the supermarket, okay? And some may, may buy at six ringgit, some may buy at four ringgit, okay? So with time, you will see that price actually move in a range, right? Of uh, four to six ringgit because people are happy to transact between four to six ringgit. Now, if I draw this into like a bell curve, this is what we call the volume profile. Volume profile is essentially, sorry, volume profile is essentially a visual record of where transaction happen, right? In this case, the transaction of watermelon happens between four to six ringgit. It shows us a range. Now, if I just show you in terms of like a price chart, you will see that the price tend to go in a sideway pattern, right? And and this is where, uh, now that I introduced you to volume profile, this is where auction market theory comes in. Auction market theory tells us that the market moves higher due to imbalances between buyer and seller aggression until a balance is achieved, or I call it a fair value. What do I mean by this? So imagine uh, everyone is eating happily, eating watermelon between four to six ringgit. Suddenly a heat wave like right now uh, happened and suddenly people are demand towards watermelon increase and what will happen if uh because watermelon supply there are only so much right so what will happen ladies and gentlemen what will happen when the demand is stronger than the supply most likely the price will increase right in this case there's a shift in value right people may start to buy watermelon at 10 right some may start to buy or at 9 ringgit or 11 ringgit in other words right there is a shift in value where uh the supply of or the sellers of water market, uh, uh, sorry, watermelon are offering uh, their product at a higher value. So this is what we call a shift in value, right? Until a balance is achieved, right? They were transacting, they were testing, you know, 10 ringgit, 9 ringgit, which one would people uh, happy to transact until they achieve a balance up at between a range of 9 to 11 ringgit. So this is what we call auction market theory. Now, a question now after once the heat wave ended right everything goes back to normal where what will happen to the price of watermelon anyone now in uh once the heat wave ended right the price of watermelon will you agree that it will go back to the prior fair value where people were happy to buy watermelon between four to six ringgit right so this is uh what we call auction market theory right uh price is always looking for a fair value price is always forming value right okay now i want to show you a shift in value in real life so this is a milo right uh a milo product uh in 2020 right what happened in 2020 covid happened right in march 2020 so as you can see uh prior to march 2020 okay prior to march 2020 Milo was transacting between 16 to $20, right? And during March 2020, uh, when COVID just right, right, there was a panic on food supply. Right? And what happened was price actually spiked out and formed a new value around uh, on, on above $25 to $30, right? And what happened when, once that, uh, when, when things got settled, right? People have more certainty over their food supply, right? Price, ladies and gentlemen, goes back to prior fair value where people were happy to buy. So, I, what I'm trying to say, uh, describe to all of you is that auction market theory happens or uh, how the market works, right? The pattern of market happens in not just real life, it's so, uh, not just financial market, it also happens in real life, okay?
Okay, now in other words, right, as you can see, uh, volume profile is a very transparent and a freely available tool for few, especially for futures trader. Why? Because futures market like the uh, in Malaysia is the F, things like FKLI or the crude palm oil futures, right? They offers transparent information on trading volume, which is accessible for all traders. So in this example, you can see, right? You could have imagined, right? The the price was sideways for a while, then it pushed out, it formed a little bit of value, which you can see, right? The 29, the 63, the 58, the 42. And right now, the right price right now is uh 3150, 114, 3150. So 14, 3150. And this is where price goes down, right? So you can imagine with just a volume profile, we could imagine or visualize how the price uh uh moved in the price chart. Okay, um, now I want to move on to now that we have understand volume profile, I want to share with you some trading ideas that you can finally, you know, implement with alongside order flow in your trading for especially for th those of you who are new to trading. Uh, I hope this uh, could inspire you to start consider order flow in your trading. Uh, for those of you who are existing trader, you could use order flow to in uh, implement order flow in to supplement your uh, tra existing trading system. Now, the first I trading idea I share with all of you is fading the extreme. Now, fading the extreme means now all of you, uh, all of us saw volume profile just now. Now, fading extreme means essentially when the price we uh take a long when price reaches the bottom edge of the volume profile, and on the other hand, when the price reaches the top edge or extreme top extreme of the volume profile, we take a short. Right, this is what we essentially uh what I call fading the extreme, right? Because imagine, right? Um, if not if there's no fundamental change in price of watermelon, right? Would you uh I would you buy uh it, it, would you buy when the price of watermelon is at four ringgit? Usually it's so at five. Yes, it's a good deal, right? So this is what essentially what we are doing right here, fading the extreme. Okay, so to improve this approach or strategy, consider watching the order flow as an entry confirmation. Number one, if you are looking to go long, okay, which is at the bottom extreme, right? Optionally, you want to see sellers trying to push down, all right? But buyers are absorbing them like a sponge, right? So uh, sellers have a problem trying to break through. But more importantly, we want to see when you want to take a long, right? You want to see order flow going in your favor, right? You want to see the other sellers, right? Are clicking by the buy button actively. Okay, so you want to see aggression from the buyers. If you are looking to go short, it's the other way around, right? You want to see buyers uh, trying to break through by being absorbed, okay? But more importantly, you want to see sellers, right, in your direction, okay? Now, let's look at an example, okay? An example, this example is from um, the crude palm oil futures, okay? Now, okay, let me pause the button for a moment. Okay, th in this uh, example, I will, uh, I want to uh, just test everyone's knowledge from what we have learned so far. Could you identify where uh, the price, uh, the fair value a uh, is? Well, give it a try. Okay, let's identify the context first. Okay, give me a moment. Huh? Okay, will you agree that the fair value is around uh thirty seven twenty? Oops, twenty to uh, 37 25 right this is where a bulk of uh, volume happened at the uh, we can see uh, where volume happened at the volume profile now what happened right now is price is at 37 12 right this is what we call the extreme right if i can may draw it here the extreme of the volume profile so this is where I would potentially consider stocking for a uh, fading the extreme trade from the bottom extreme. Okay. Now, give me a moment. Now I will play the video. I want I want all of you to observe, right? As uh as I play the video, price will push up to 3715, 3716, right? And I'll pause it again. I and I'll uh, continue with my description later. Let me play the button. Okay, price push price push up from 3712. To 37 15 and 37 16. now right now i'll share with you what's uh what i have in my mind right in this uh analysis 
okay uh, I saw at the December 15 they were 130 right which is a higher than usual volume traded at uh, 37 15 right 130 contract traded now my observation right now is I want to see when sellers try to push down again right could it uh, could uh, the level of 37 15 be defended i.e the buyers want to defend that level right and if that happened I also want to see buyers aggressively right coming in aggressive uh, hitting clearing off the pending sell orders before I enter a uh fading the extreme trade now take a look first of all uh you take a look at 37.15 price will try to test it a couple times but it will fail right you test a couple times uh, you test once you test twice right 37.15 hold it grounds well okay right now this is where once a once a multiple test of 37.15 happen and it cannot break below 3715. And I see that aggressive uh, clearing of the pending sell, uh, sell order, right? This is where I enter my extreme uh, fade trade, right? At around 3718, right? Let's see what happened. Okay, once I enter at 3718, it tried to push back again. Again, 3715 would most likely, uh, I want to see if it holds. If it doesn't hold, then my trade is wrong, all right? So where would I trade it until? I would most likely trade it until around 37.22 or 37.23, which is the middle of the volume profile where uh, value, fair value forms. So look at 37.23 or 37.22, right? Price will eventually test, go and test there. All right. So in, in this case, right, we make about uh, four, uh, one, two, three, about four to five points, okay? So this is uh, an example of what I call the fading the extreme example. Okay, now the next uh, trading idea that I want to share with all of you is what I call trading the breakout. Okay, trading a breakout essentially is uh, trading the breakout when the price pushes through the fair value uh, or volume profile, okay, and form another new uh, volume profile, okay. So essentially, in this case, when I uh, want to go long on a breakout, this is where I would long. And when I want to short, this is where I would take a shot. Okay. So uh, again, you could use order flow as an entry confirmation, right? Ideally, if you go long, you want to see aggressive uh, from aggression from buyers, i.e. buyers clicking the buy button, right? Before you enter. Optionally, uh, you want to see sellers trying to prevent, you know, uh, at the age of value, right? Sellers trying to uh, prevent buyers from pushing through but fail, right? Or this is definitely a good sign. If you are going short, you uh, uh, on the other hand, you want to see sellers, right, being very aggressive, right? Optionally, you want to see buyers trying to prevent them from pushing down but they fail, right? Uh, okay. So, let's get an example. Okay, so before we, before we continue, before I click play, uh, let's form the context of the situation first. Now, would you agree that uh, this volume profile is kind of like something like this, right? So there are a bulge volume at uh, 38, uh, there are bulge volume at 38, 37 to 38, 40, and then it goes down and it forms another big value on the bottom. So right now, price is in uh, this, small bulge of uh, volume over here right so my plan uh as you'll see later is it will break down right of of will break down and i would be trading it into the prior fair value okay now let me sh show you what i mean okay now um let me press play Okay, now as we press play, I also want you to pay attention to the price of 38.35, right? Remember 38.35, they were like larger than usual pet buy pending order lying up here. This gives um, traders that have no uh, uh, order flow knowledge that, oh, there's a strong support here, you know, when price goes down, I, I, I probably there's a strong support uh, preventing me from taking a shot. So, what we have we learned today, ladies and gentlemen, there's a possibility of spoofing, right? So right now, my uh, game plan is I want to see when price goes down to 38, 35, 
is this uh, uh, 85 buy pending order, are they le legit, right? Will they just pull out their order or will they fulfill their pending, buy pending order, right? If they uh, do not fulfill their order, they, i.e. they pull off the spoofing happen, right? It will give me a more conviction to take a shot, all right? Let's take a look. Observe 35, 38, 35, all right? As price got close to 38, 35, this will be a slightly long video, right? Okay, as price got close to 38, 35, can you see what happened, right? The 80 plus uh, buy panic order become four, right? Meaning buyers have a uh, very little conviction to defend, right, the, uh, the level. So this gives me uh, initial uh, confidence that, oh, okay, this shot might work, right? But I want to see aggression from the sellers, right? Let's so I want to see, let's say uh, 36 and 35, right? They are uh, the two and four buy panic orders being cleared, right? before I take a shot. All right, price is still at 38, 36. All right, let's wait. So right now, my game plan is I want to see the 5 and 13, right? The buy pending order, the dark blue uh, column being cleared off. All right, so I see uh, right now, uh, as you can see, in that split second, price moved down to 38, 34, which means sellers are uh, clearing off all the uh, buy pending order. So this is a signal for me to take a shot, right? So right now, essentially, let me show you what happened, right? Right now, I'm taking a shot, all right? I'm taking a shot back into the prior fair value, right? Which is here, okay? So um, so right now, once I take a shot, where would I like uh, ideally plan for my target profit? Most likely uh, in the middle, right? Somewhere in the middle of the fair value, which is around 28, right? 28 is around somewhere here, right? This is a more conservative target profit, okay? So, uh, but because of time, I most likely wouldn't play the whole video, but uh, just understand that uh, I hope, but I hope you find it useful when I go through my um, thought process with all of you. Okay. Now, um, a quick one. Why should you add order flow to your trading? What are the benefits? Number one, for those of you who are struggling with your win rate right now, because example, whenever you enter your stop loss, immediately get hit, right? Or you have a very poor uh, hit rate in your strategy. Uh, it, uh, added, right? Number two, uh, it also can reduce low that are not or comfortable. If some of you are trading using, let's say, support and resistance. Um, whenever price hits support, ideally you want to go long, right? But um, right now with order flow, you can see if whether uh, buyers are aggressively hitting the buy button, right? If they are doing so, then uh, it's an additional confluence to your entry. Okay. So uh, alternate. Uh, in, on the other hand, right, with order flow, you can also identify high quality trades that are confirmed with uh, or confluenced by order flow. Number four, uh, whether uh, regardless of what trading system you are using, let's say Fibonacci or MACD or RSI, right? You don't have to use volume profile of though. Hopefully, I hope you would explore that. But um, you could use uh DOM, right? The debt or market, right? To in your trading, right? Uh, it, it's not difficult, right? And lastly, at at once level, right? A trader can use order flow to manage a trade. You know, uh. Some there's a saying that pro traders always add on their bid to their winners, right? One uh one of the way uh, traders can use to add on to, to their winners is through order flow. Though I think this could be a topic for uh, the future. All right. Now a uh, quick principle on how I use order flow. Number one, order flow uh is not perfect. It it can be misleading. In fact, it can be misleading many many times, right? If you don't know how to use it out of context. So example, things like absorption and aggression happens inside fair value a lot, right? So what I'm trying to say, oh, sorry, what I'm trying to say is things like this, right? So if you are trading in uh, this volume profile, right? Price, when you trade inside the uh, inside a sideway pattern, what could happen is you see a lot of absorption, you see a lot of spoofing, you see a lot of aggression inside the chart inside a sideway pattern and you can get chopped a lot. 
So order flow is not a, a perfect tool, right? In, in fact, um, it's, you, I would say for most traders or most trading style, order flow, you should not use order flow on its own. So as such, my suggestion, use order flow in tandem or with context. Some, for those of you traders that have learned about trading, right? You, you know, right? Context is the most important thing, right? So 90% context, only use order flow uh, for those of you who are new to improve your trading entry, right? You want to see aggression from the, uh, in your favor, okay? So example, you, when you fade at the extreme of value area, which is the context, you can use order flow as an entry confirmation, all right? And so, um, okay, how to practice reading order flow? My suggestion, especially if you are new, right? Practice with a thicker market. Example here is the FKLI futures over a thinner market such as the FCPO or uh, crude palm oil futures. Why? Let me show you an example, right? The reason, what, what do I mean by a thicker market? A thicker market refers to uh, a, a pending order that is, sorry with the flow, I'm not sure why the drawing is like this, but nevertheless, um, a thicker market refers to uh, pending orders where there are uh, more pending orders on, uh, lining up. Right. When you compare to the FCPO, which is on the right, right, there are only a single, um, uh, most of the pending orders are in single digits. What does this mean essentially? Essentially is market with a very low um, or single digit pending orders, right, tend to be clear off very easily, right? Because imagine you want to clear off uh, a price level with one pending order it, compared to you want to clear off a price level with, let's say, 50 pending order. Which one is easier? Obviously, the one pending order is easier to clear, right? So this means, right, thinner markets like FCPO, they tend to move very fast. The, the dome that you are seeing move very fast. You can't learn anything, right? So for new traders that want to learn order flow, you want to observe order flow, Learn to look order, uh, look uh, observe order flow at the thicker market like the FKLI futures. Okay, let me show you, um, an example. Let me show you an example over here. So on your left, you have the uh FKLI futures, which is a thicker market. On your right, you have the FCPO market, the crude palm oil futures market, which is a Thinner market, thinner market move faster, right? So I want you to uh, you, uh, look at this, you can visualize for yourself, right? Look at how fast the FCPO market move while the FKLI market is just very, very steady, right? You see how fast the FCPO market move, right? FKLI just move, right? You could see it very easily, but FKL, uh, for FCPO on the right, it moves so fast, you, your eyes cannot catch it, right? Okay, so uh, I hope you understand what, uh, why I suggest you to start practicing, right? At least in the thicker market first before migrating to a faster market, all right? Oops, sorry. Okay, um, aside from that, right? A few key tips on what you can uh, observe, what you should observe for while looking at the order flow pattern. Number one, aggression at key level. So let's say you want to, um, when you do a fade the extreme trade, right, at the extreme uh, at, of the volume profile, right, you want to see, right, if you want to take a long, is uh, other buyers supporting your narrative, right, uh, uh, other buyers supporting your trade idea, right, if other buyers are stepping in and clearing in the pen, uh, clearing off the pending orders, yes, then this is where you come in, right. Secondly, you want to see things like absorption, right, in your favor. So let's say you want to take a long, ideally, you want to see prior to the movement, right? Sellers are trying to push down, but they fail, right? Uh, they keep getting absorbed, okay? This is something that, uh, that add confluence to your trading. And number three, uh, spoofing, right? You see a lot of this, uh, and most of them are especially obvious, right? Example, uh, the 80 plus spending orders that we see in our discussion just now, okay? So this, how, observe how this false impression of support or resistance are formed in larger than usual pending order, just for them to be pulled off, right, last minute in the split second, okay? So these are some of the three things that you can learn to observe. So uh, key takeaways before uh, we end, number one, order flow can be used to improve your entries, even trade, and even more so at trade management when you are at an advanced level, okay? And number two, 
Other flow knowledge, knowledge can be integrated in your existing trading system to improve your trading precision. Number three, practice. If you want to learn about order flow, please practice at the, at, uh, with a thicker market such as the FKRI because your eyes can catch the movement at the dome. Okay, so uh, this is pretty much it. I think uh, I have shared everything I need to share today. And uh, thanks for having me. And I there's a Q&A session, but I'll pass the session back to uh, CY moderator first. Uh, thank you, Yishuan, for your informative sharing. I believe many of your, our audiences here have gained uh, valuable information about how to use order flow in trading. Now it's time for our Q&A session. And uh, we encourage you to participate by asking any question that you may have that is uh, related to today's topic. Uh, to do so, uh, simply type your questions in the Q&A box. And when you submit your question, uh, please make sure it is sent to all co-hosts to ensure that I can easily uh, locate and address your question. Uh, we are looking forward to hear from you, so don't hesitate to ask questions related to today's topic. Uh, while some of you, if you don't have any questions while waiting for your uh, questions to come in, uh, I would like to ask a small favor from you. Uh, I would like you to take a minute of your time to fill up this feedback form since uh, we have already provided you an informative uh, session today. Uh, it just only takes you less than one minute to fill up this feedback form. You can find the link for the feedback form uh, which will be provided in the chat box or you can use your mobile phone uh, to scan this QR code. Uh, just take one quick minute and let us know what are your thoughts, comments and feedbacks so that in the near future, we are able to improve uh, further on our site and give you great value contents and learnings to help you improve on your trading. So just, uh, just take one quick minute uh, to fill up this feedback form and we will continue with our Q&A session. Okay, time's up. If you have already submitted your feedback, I appreciate that and thanks a lot. Well, for those of you who haven't finished yet, you can continue to finish your uh, feedback form. And thanks for your participation in giving us your feedback. We will uh, strive our best in improving in our next session. And uh, now let's continue with the Q&A session. Now, I see there are several questions here that is uh, related to today's topic. So uh, let's get started with the uh, first question is that uh, what are some of the common challenges in uh, interpreting uh, order flow uh, data? All right, thanks CY for, the, for uh, reading a question for me. Uh, good question. The biggest challenge I would say for a beginner is to actually putting the time uh, to actually understand what's happening in the order uh, in the dome. So uh, remember in what I shared just now is when you first started looking at the dome, right, everything is very alien to you, looks very alien to you, right? Because price, you see what you are, you were seeing to a uh, naked eyes, it's just numbers are going up and down, right? So in order to, the biggest challenge for a beginner would be to actually understand what's happening or interpreting what's happening in the market, okay? As the price uh, in the dome goes up and down. So consider 
using a few tips. Number one, uh, uh, un, uh, understand things like spoofing, absorption, right? Uh, understand how price move, right? I.e. clearing of the pending orders on the site, right? And also uh, use, uh, please consider reading order flow, uh, i.e. from, let's say, the age uh, or uh, alongside context example, the age of fair value uh, volume profile or uh, as this would be a context or if you are, let's say, trading using support and resistance as an example, you could observe um, what happened when price tests your support zone and you want to see if buyers aggression are coming in. So this makes your learning curve much easier. So yeah. Okay, uh, while you are speaking on uh, support and resistance, how does uh, order flow analysis are able to help uh, traders in identifying uh, support and resistance level? I, uh, I think uh, if for most traders, uh, there is definitely a way for uh, a trader to identify, or especially uh, on, a, I would say, a micro level, right, on the DOM, a uh, support and resistance, especially if you see, uh, let's say, when a volume profile, is uh suddenly there's like a large volume have uh recorded in the volume profile, then that could be a relatively uh decent support zone or resistance zone depending on where the price is. But other than that, right, I would say for most traders, so let's say, uh, you are using support and resistance trading strategy. Order flow, uh, you could easily identify support and resistance on your conventional uh candlestick chart, right? So instead of uh, what you can use where order flow can come in is you can use order flow to identify your entry, right? It doesn't, in this case, it doesn't identify your support or resistance. You use it to, uh, alongside to complement your entry, right? If you already have a supply resistance, uh, strategy. Yeah. Okay. Next question, uh, would be, uh, can order flow analysis be used in day trading or is it more suitable for longer term trading? All right, good question. Um, all right, uh, from my limited experience, <laughs> I would say order flow is more at this point, uh, the, at least for the two that I shared with you today, uh, it's more suitable for shorter term uh, trading, right? Like scalping or intraday trading instead of a longer term trading. But, but, but there's a caveat here. There are different order flow tools that I, uh, that I haven't shared today. Um, things like you could Google it out yourself, right? Footprint. Things like cumulative delta, this could help you identify uh, order flow context in a bigger perspective, which could help you trade on a longer term time frame. But uh, to answer your question from from what we have learned today, right? Just from what we have learned today, it's more for shorter term day trading. Yeah. All right. Uh, the next question would be, I think, is uh, related to the uh, volume profile. So uh, this participant asks is that how can we actually justify uh, the validity of the volume uh, trade method because uh, price changes uh, dynamically, right, uh, based on the market reaction and news. So how can we actually justify the validity uh, of the volume trade method? Um, okay, I actually don't quite understand the question, but um, I will use my own <laughs> interpretation towards the question. So, uh... I guess the only way for you to identify whether this trading method works or not is you can observe it yourself, right? As an example, I mentioned that uh, under uh, normal circumstances, right, in the volume profile, price tends to uh, go uh, zigzag in be between uh, two edge of the profile, right? They tend to go zigzag unless something changed, unless there's a news that happens, right, and so on. So you, you, I, I would suggest you could probably go back and observe, right, for yourself, if this were to happen, right, under normal, normal circumstances, if nothing were to happen, the price tend to stay inside the volume profile, right, and also alternative, alternatively, when there's a breaking news, right, does price break out of the volume profile, how, the, how often does that happen, I would say, um, you sh could probably uh, observe yourself, and I think that's a benefit of doing so, is you can, uh, once you understand, right, you see this uh, so many times, you could start to develop your own strategy and trading approach alongside the knowledge. Yeah. Okay, uh, the next question I think is quite a basic question. Uh, what is the bid and ask uh, size represents in the market? 
All right. So the B and R size is, I would say, essentially is the uh, dark blue and dark red column, right? So you could imagine uh, the example that we talked about the whole day just today, which is the watermelon seller. So let's say uh, the uh, one side on the red uh, column is the watermelon sellers waiting to sell to you if you want to buy. On the other side are the watermelon buyers that want to buy from you if you want to sell. So uh, I hope this is the... Uh, so when it comes to the financial market, this essentially means that uh, the people that wants to buy and sell from you, you could think of it of uh, as supply in the market, people that wants to make a deal with you if you go to them. So I hope this clarifies things. All right, uh, next question would be, uh, can order flow be used in those uh, high volume and fast moving markets? Yes, I, that, yes, this is certainly, this is certainly possible uh, because uh, as I mentioned just now, FCPO, I show a lot of FCPO example today. It's a very fast market, right? It, uh, it's like for naked eyes, right? Unless I describe what I'm uh, looking for you, you most likely not sense what's happening. So this is uh, an example of where uh, practice comes in, right? Uh, it's, uh, it's not about whether a market goes fast or slow, right? It's about whether you are adapting or you know your market that you are trading or not. Yeah. So yes, the answer is definitely yes, it's possible. Okay, uh, next question would be, uh, how can a, a trader distinguish between the genuine uh, order flow and uh, a spoofing? All right, good question. So uh, spoofing, it actually happens uh, everywhere, right? Almost all, every time in the market, but some are less obvious, some are very obvious. My suggestion to you is to perhaps, uh, because as I, as I, as we discussed today, pending orders, like uh, pending order patterns, like spoofing, right? Um, it's not as important of an information in your decision making. Why? Because it is not. It does not represent an actual transaction. Okay, actual transaction means all uh people that actually click the buy market order. Pending order, on the other hand, things like spoofing, right? Can be pulled off uh for fun. People can just enter hundred. Uh, pending orders just for fun and take off when price got close to it, right? So my suggestion to you for spoofing, right? Uh, when especially when you're learning, identify those bigger than usual, uh, pending order line out there and observe as price get down to the level or where the large pending order is. See where see whether it is materialized or not. So this is where you can look at the volume profile, right? See whether let's say there are eighty buy pending order see whether when uh the buy the 80 pending order are uh, materialized when price actually got to the price level or whether nothing happened uh, and this is where you can spot spoofing yeah okay uh we are going to take a couple few more questions uh before i wrap up this session uh, are there any specific time frames that uh, order flow analysis is uh, particularly effective for um, I would say, I think, no, based on my understanding from the people that uh, trade the same style as me or uh, uh, which is order flow, I, I've seen people trade uh, scalp, i.e. go in and out within seconds or minutes, right? Very successfully with order flow. I've also seen people uh, do uh, medium term uh, trading or intraday trading with order flow very successfully. Yeah, so there's no a spec there's no one specific time frame. It's more like uh whether your commitment uh you can can you see in front of the uh in front of your laptop or PC all the time, right? Just to go in and out of the market, right? Or do you have less time where you prefer to, you know, spend one or two hours only every day just to trade? Then then this is where you adjust your time frame, not based on uh order flow itself, right? So use order flow as a tool to improve your decision making, uh, things like your entry and so on. Yeah. Okay. I don't see any more questions uh, coming in. Uh, one more question that uh, before we wrap up this session, uh, Yishan, uh, can you highlight uh, what are the few important things that uh, beginners must know about the order flow uh, analysis? All right. Um. Okay, first of all, you have to know, you really have to know how, how price move. You have to, first of all, unlearn what you might have learned on all the 
uh, free public platform like YouTube, right? Uh, where people tend to say, you know, if these indicators happen, price will go out. If, if this indicator show this, price will go down, right? Price doesn't move because of indicators. Price move, as I explained just now, because people are making transactions. Okay, that is the core foundation understanding that you need to know. Okay, now knowing this, you have to uh, moving on to the next stage. You have to learn how to look at order flow on the dome. That is at least what I learned uh, from my own foundation. I look at the dome for a month or two months or three months, right? Before I um, uh, uh, move on to the next phase of my learning. So I would say uh, consider look at the dome, right? For let's say at least a month, right? Um, and look for things like aggression. Looks for things like absorption. Looks for things like look for things like spoofing. This will improve your understanding as you identify. Uh, makes you easy, makes it easier for you to ident identify all the flow pattern in the market. So, um, I would say then lastly, start with a thicker, slower market like FKLI instead of FCPO. Okay, this will makes your learning curve much easier because things are much stable and calmer in the FKLI market. <clears throat> And uh, I would say once you have all this in place, lastly, you could start uh, integrating it in your uh, either through the volume profile uh, strategy that I share with you today or your own existing strategy like the support and resistance or your moving average strategy is really up to you. But I would definitely suggest considering the volume profile approach, you know, fading the extreme of uh, trading a breakout that I share with you today alongside with order flow as a confluence and for your entry, yeah. All right, thank you, Yishan, for uh, helping us in terms of uh, summarizing the few uh, important things to look for in order flow. All right, uh, it's about time, and thank you uh, for your participation and engagement. Uh, we appreciate uh, each and every one of you, and allow me to wrap up today's uh, webinar session. As I've uh, shared to you previously, uh, this is uh, the Let's Learn Futures webinar series. It's a series of topics where we will be conducting every Tuesday evening, same time from 8.30 p.m. until 10 p.m. There are lots of content-packed and informative topics where you will be learning some practical knowledge about futures trading from our experienced uh, speakers. If you would like to join any session, you can scan this QR code and register the topics that you would like to attend. Once you scan the QR code, you will come to this page and there will be an event calendar. So if you would like to join the upcoming uh, LLF webinar topic session on Tuesday column, you can click on it and register yourself. If you want to understand the futures market and how to trade futures in detail, then this online workshop is definitely right for you because today's webinar is only brief uh, to introduce you about the futures market. If you are still uh, very new in the futures market or if you are thinking of uh, trading futures, then I highly recommend you to join this online uh, workshop right now. Uh, as this online workshop is very different from the webinar, it's a step-by-step -step workshop where we will be guiding you how to kickstart uh, to trade the first futures contract. It's a detailed class from A to Z for beginners. So you can pick up your phone, uh, take a screenshot or picture of this and register yourself uh, right after this webinar ends. It's for those who are serious in uh, kickstarting your futures trading because each and every session, we will be limited to the first 50 online attendees only. So remember to register yourself in both uh, workshops and book yourself a seat. You can also find the LLF online workshop in our event calendar as well. The LLF online workshop uh, usually falls on either Saturday or Sunday during the weekends. There is a website from Busan, Malaysia called the Bursa Marketplace. Uh, inside, uh, you can register yourself for a risk-free trading experience where you can do paper trading in a trading platform. It's called the Derivatives Trading Simulator. So you can do paper trading and you can also familiarize yourself in futures trading. So uh, why not give yourself a try, test it out so that you can learn and begin to develop interest to further your futures trading.
Before we end this session, let me introduce you to this Busan Academy, where this Busan Academy is a comprehensive one-stop e-learning platform where you can get all the information and knowledge about stocks, futures, and any other products that you can trade in Busan, Malaysia. You can scan the QR code on your right here, or you can Google search Busa Academy and make sure you are able to find this link. And you can access to Busa Academy uh, for more information. All right, uh, this comes to the end of our session for today. Thank you, Yishan, for sharing with us an informative session. And thank you, uh, all of you, for joining us today. We hope you found this webinar informative and engaging. And I believe you have learned lots of uh, informative knowledge and broaden your perspective about uh, trading, especially using the order flow analysis. So with that, I'm CY. I'll see you next time. Good night and goodbye.